go. This is the sport's biggest event of the year in arguably one of, if not the most scenic part of the country. This is round two of the 2018 South African National Rally Championship hosted by the Mpumalanga town of Sabi. Welcome to the 2018 York Rally. This is the beautiful area surrounding the town of Sabi, regarded as many as one of the most beautiful parts of the country, with a magnitude of natural wonders such as breathtaking beautiful mountains and a host of waterfalls. But Sabi is also home to one of the biggest employers and investors in the area, York Timbers. And thanks to the support of the Timber Giants, Motorsport South Africa through the Southern African Motorsport Club was once again able to continue the legacy of the country's most famed rally. Here is York Timber CEO Peter Van Sale with his thoughts on the rally and what it does for the area. We are very proud again to be associated with the rally. The rally itself has been running for 27 years now. And yes, for us it's a, it's, it's, it's a privilege to invite all the drivers to, to our valley, uh, give them opportunity to experience you know, roads and infrastructure. And it's also a good influx for tourism for our town. It's a big Thing to be able to give back to a community. You know, it's, some people like to just to hand out, we don't believe in that. We rather to believe in to create a more of a specific event like the rally where people can come and share with us what we have every day of our lives here in the valley. Clearly the event is cause for much excitement for everyone involved. First order of business though, to make sure that all the cars comply with the safety regulations. The process is called scrutineering and it has become part of the York Rally spectacle each year as the fans get an opportunity to get really close to the cars and crews in the heart of Sabi. Once every car is checked, they are cleared to tackle the 216 kilometers of gravel roads that make up the York Rally. So the stage was set, the cars and crews were ready and the York Rally was about to kick off. But let's just have a quick look at where we were in the championship. After the first round of the 2018 title fight that took place on KZN's North Coast, it was the names of Richard Leake and co-driver Henry Kerner that topped the standings on 16 points. A second place finish in Natal secured second on the standings board for AC Potkita, with Matthew Vasey lyle occupying third ahead of Chot Conradi, Chris Kurtzer and George Smallberger. The story of round one, though, was the non-finish of defending champions Guy Bottrell and Simon Facey Lyle, who will do everything in their power to get on the scoreboard at the York Rally. As always, the York Rally also featured as a round of the African Rally Championship. This year's event saw as many as six cars from countries such as Kenya, Tanzania and Zambia that included a few four-wheel drive Mitsubishi Lancers, a Toyota Yaris that used to compete in South Africa in previous years and a state-of-the-art R5 Skoda Fabia, driven by African rally champion Manver Birian from Kenya. So here we are, it's race day time. Yesterday, everyone went through scrutineering. Today, it is all about getting nervous, getting into the queue, lined up and ready to go racing. The wet weather did very little to dampen the excitement as a large crowd gathered to witness the spectacle created by the ceremonial start of the York Rally. For the drivers and co-drivers, this was time to start focusing on the task that lay ahead. Young gun Richard Leake had the early season advantage following his win in Natal, but the York Rally was a whole nother ball game. Yeah, I know we've come off a good win in Belito. Um, hopefully we can carry that momentum through to the rally. Um, the roads in the rally are very, they're very nicely scraped thanks to York. They've done a great job on the roads. And here's the defending champion who will have to play it smart here in Sabi as he aimed to get his title defence underway. I think the pace is going to be quite quick. Uh, Richard's certainly going to try and get another victory in, but we're going to do is whatever we can to stop him and uh, score as many points as we can. Secunda's AC Potkita is another up-and-coming youngster with more than enough speed and talent to fight for victory. Yeah, it's a tough, tough, tough day today. It rained just in the night, so uh, it's very slippy the road. So uh, today I just want to keep it on the road and finish the day. Uh, that's the most important thing. Besides the official South African Championship R2 cars and the African Championship four-wheel drive cars, the field also consisted of a few classic rally cars, as well as a number of cars in the open class. 
With all the talk done and dusted, it was time for York's Peter Van Sale, along with Taba Chui Council representatives, to cut the ribbon and wave the starters' flag. Join us after the break for all of the York Rally action. Adventure, fun and relaxation. Only an hour away from the East Rand. At Lake Umuzi, we have a variety of restaurants, a water park, the largest jungle gym in Africa, two hotels, self-catering chalets, a camping oasis and two golf courses within a 10-minute drive. Challenge your perception. Lake Umuzi and Pumalanga, your weekend awaits. Day one of the York Rally included seven special stages. Six of these were in the forest, while stage seven would once again be the famous town stage on the streets of Sabi. But first up, 16 kilometers of muddy forest tracks in the Olifons Geramte forest. The same 16 kilometers were also used as stage two, while stage three at Longridge had a fearsome reputation with high cliffs and long drops into the valley below, never far away. Driver Marvin Burian, along with Scottish co-driver Drew Sturrock, were the first to venture off into the unknown behind the wheel of their Skoda Fabia. The car is a piece of art and drew a lot of attention, but as it was competing in the African Championship, all eyes were on the title fight between the leading South African contenders. Chris Kurtzer and Greg Godrich were cautious at first, but successfully emerged from the forest and the first loop of stages. The Electra Thread Mazda set a time of 45 minutes and 3 seconds at this point. Slightly ahead of them was the Toyota Etius of Chad Conradi and Marie van der Valt. Conradi is an old hand at this game and he wasn't going to risk life or limb so early on. Just ahead of Conradi, the Yato Tools Etius of Matthew Vasey Lyle and co-driver Rickus Ferry. They were just 6 seconds ahead of Conradi on the overall leaderboard but it could have been more if it wasn't for a small problem inside the car. Nico Nienaber and Gert Janssen van Rensburg arrived at the end of stage three, but lost a lot of time and were forced to retire shortly afterwards. We broke a side of about two and a half kilometers into the stage. We think it's the left-hand side. Uh, we'll see if we can fix it. We don't have a spare, so uh, if we do not, then we are really. So. Round one winners, Richard Leake and Henry Kerner, started well in their ATS Ford Fiesta, but picked up a puncher just seven kilometers into the first stage. Perrin opted to drive it out, but lost around 40 valuable seconds in the process. This meant that defending champions Guy Bottrell and Simon Vasey Lyle could put their heads down and go for broke, but they didn't. The Toyota Gazoo Racing SA Etios driver did not take any risks and emerged from stage three with the third fastest time of all the South African national contenders. There wasn't much in it though, as the current second position belonged to the Lake Amuzi Volkswagen Polo of AC Potkida and Nico Swartz. The gap between Potkida and Bottrell, only three tenths of a second, and that after 52 kilometers of racing. This meant that we had a new pairing at the top of the R2 national leaderboard. It was the Swazi Cowboy, Jono van Veek, alongside Barry White in the newly refurbished Ford Fiesta that set the initial pace at the front end of the field. Overall though, it was Burian and Sturrock who led the way as expected, with the Salam group Toda Oris of Tiens Joubert and Carl Peskin with the second fastest time overall and leading the open class. Further back, the very entertaining Ford Escort of Lee Rose and former champion navigator Alvin Vonk was leading the classic car section. Vonk is of course the same Alvin Kutsia who won two overall championships before she got married. Here with confirmation of the standings after the first three action-packed stages of the 2018 York Rally. Virian led overall ahead of the open class cars of Tien Chubert. As far as the South African championship was concerned, it was Jono van Veek who surprised everyone with his speed ahead of Potkida and Bottrell. Gomez was the second ARC car on the list ahead of South Africans Leek, Vasey Lyle, Conradi and Kurtzer who rounded out the top 10. Coming in at the end of the first three stages, Sabi is clearly a changeable terrain. 
One corner's got grip, one corner's got no grip. It's definitely a case of holding back and going slower to go faster. Join us down in the pits where we catch up with all the reactions from the start of day number one. Really difficult out there. I'm quite glad to be back in the service park now. Those first three stages were very tough. Uh, like you say, the conditions changed dramatically. Potkita found himself in the middle of the R2 national class battle. Um, no, I, I'm, I'm keeping it easy. Uh, I try just to get to the finish, but yeah, that last stage is very hectic. Um, we did have some moments there, so we tried to keep it easy, but not always possible in this mud. The man leading the South African fight was none other than Jono van Veek. Yeah, it was um, a balance and uh, seemed to have got lucky with the, the amount of pressure I put on. Uh, just taking it easy though and having fun. And let's hear from the man who led the overall rally at this point, Burian. Um, the, you know, the other stage up in the, in the cliffs, um, we had to take that cautiously. Uh, very sleepy and there's a lot of fog up there as well. So, yeah, we're just happy to be here at the moment. And those were the standings after the first few stages. And there was still a lot of racing to come. The crews went back into the fearsome Long Ridge stage for a second run, followed by two runs through the York Sabi Forest stage, quite literally on the edge of town. And as if conditions weren't tricky enough, the rain returned, making it even more challenging. And unfortunately, the dreaded Long Ridge didn't take long to claim another victim. This time, it was Chart Conradi and Marie van der Valt who failed to reach the finish line. The national R2 class battle between Van Veek, Potkita and Bottrell was starting to heat up. On the scary roads of Longridge, Potkita managed to extend his second place advantage over Bottrell by around three seconds. But more importantly, the Lake Amuzi Volkswagen Polo cut the deficit to class leader Jono Van Veek by a full 11 seconds. Bottrell, on the other hand, hit back by beating both Van Veek and Potkita over the first run of the Sabi Forest stage, edging a little closer to Van Veek's lead and passing Potkita in the process. This trio was clearly fired up as the battle between them intensified on the second run through the Sabi Forest stage. This time, it was Van Veek who responded with a stage win to slightly increase his R2 national class lead over Bottrell, with Potkita very hot on his heels in third. Behind these three, it was young Richard Leake who recovered from his early setbacks. The ATS Fiesta slowly crawled its way into contention and moved up into fourth place, comfortably ahead of the Toyota Etios of Matthew Vasey Lyle, who was also back up to speed after fitting a new gear lever to replace the broken one earlier. They were followed back into Sabi by the Electra Thread Mazda of Chris Kurtzer and the Ford Fiesta of JJ Potkita and Tommy DeToy. Unfortunately, it was the end of the road for George Smallberger and Navi Carolyn Swan, who were forced to throw in the towel. Uh, I don't have any throttle. Uh, we're trying to swing. The little plug is loose or this bike. Next up was the very famous and popular Sabi Town Stage. For many years, this spectacle has succeeded in thrilling the large crowd who gather to get really close to the action. And we mean really close. But therein lays the challenge for the crews. The stage is just 1.8 kilometers in distance, but it is run in the dark and literally lined with tons of people and pavements. One cannot win a rally on a spectator stage like this one, but one can certainly lose it. It was young gun Richard Leake who set the fastest time around the streets of Sabi with a time of 2 minutes and 36 seconds. He was closely followed by the Etios of Bottrell and the Skoda of Birion going third fastest. But these times were very close, with only a few seconds separating the top runners. So it did little to affect the overall outcome of day one. That was all she wrote for an action-packed day one of the York Rally. Sadly for Jono van Veek though, his name will disappear from the leaderboard as he will not be able to restart the next day due to a blown engine on the final stage. This meant then that Bottrell took over the national class R2 lead, followed by Potkita and Leek moving up into third ahead of Matthew Vasey-Lyle. At the top, Burian remained in control of the African division 
as well as the overall event with open class leader Tien Shubert just 21 seconds back. Will the Skoda stay out front? And who will come out on top for national honours? Join us after the break as all the action from the final day of the 2018 York Rally continues. Welcome back to the York Rally here in Mpumalanga. Day one was a very wet affair. Following heavy overnight rain, the skies seemed to have cleared for the final day. And what a great day it was going to be. The rally is full of tradition and the 2018 version was no different. As with many years before, we moved from the wet and muddy forest of Sabi to the tarred streets of Nelspreet for the famous Nelspreet Super Special, also known as the Spaghetti Junction. The stage has become somewhat of an institution and the organizers managed to once again put up a great show for the thousands of fans that line the streets. In a super special, two cars start alongside each other. When the lights go green, they set off on two different loops of the same 1.42 kilometer stage, effectively racing each other. They then meet up towards the end of the stage and from there on, it's usually a flat out dice to the finish. To ensure maximum enjoyment for the fans, the stage will be run twice in short succession. Sit back and enjoy the action. So for the fans, it's a race between two cars on the stage. But for the crews inside the cars, it's all about the time set on these two stages and the effect it has on the overall standings. The answer was not much. It only took the top crews around 1 minute and 14 seconds to complete the stage, with only tenths of seconds separating most of them. Tian Chubert was the fastest the first time around, ahead of Birian and the national R2 cars of Potkita, Basie Lyle, Bottrell and Leek. Bottrell turned the tables on the second run by claiming the stage victory ahead of Young Leek. They were followed by the four-wheel drive cars of Birian and Chubert, with the classic Ford Escort of Lee Rose setting the fifth fastest time of all. After all the excitement on the streets of Nelspreet, it was time to return to Sabi, but via stages 10 and 11. Stage 10 was on the outskirts of White River, while stage 11 ended in York's Forest, near the village of Hendricksdal. Together, they would add 37 kilometers of racing to the rally's distance. The gap between the top South African national crews was anything but comfortable at this stage. Defending champion Guy Bottrell drove well to hang onto the top spot, but he had less than 20 seconds in hand over the hard-charging Potkita, whilst Richard Leake was also within striking distance, just a further 40-odd seconds back. These youngsters are no doubt the future of the sport, and this battle proved how exciting rally can be. When the dust settled after this loop of stages, Bottrell had managed to extend his lead over Potkita and Leake, with Matthew Vasey-Lyle and Navi rickers Ferry still in hot pursuit. As far as the overall standings were concerned, Marvin Burian and Drew Sturrock also managed to extend their lead over open class leaders Tian Schubert and Carl Peskin. Gomez and Latifa were still in second in the African Championship, whilst Lee Rose and Alvin Vonk managed to retain their grip on the classic rally standings. Let's take a quick breath and see where we were after 11 stages. JJ Potkita and Tommy Detoy were the fifth of the R2 national crews and in 10th overall. They had both the African teams of Gomez and Khan as well as the classic crew of Lee Rose and Alvin Vonk in front of them. Leroy Gomez was currently the second African crew on the board and in seventh behind the string of R2 national cars piloted by Bottrell, Potkita, Leek and Vasey Lyle. Joubert was now 27 seconds behind the overall leader, Manvin Burian. Just a few more stages remained, but they all had hair on their chest and would certainly determine the final outcome of the 2018 York Timbers rally. For some, the news wasn't good. Richard Leek and Henry Kerner were driving a calculated race in third place of the R2 national class. But on the 26 kilometer stage of Magsley, it all came to an end when the ball joint on the Fiesta gave up the fight. Open class leaders Tien Schubert and Carl Peskin also had high hopes of finishing near the top of the standings, if not at the very top. But Schubert's dreams were shattered when he slid a little wide and beached his Aorus on a bank on stage 13. Sadly for AC Potkita and Nico Swartz, this loop of stages also brought an end to their fight with Guy Bottrell for the all-important win in 
in the South African Championship R2 class. Pokita's Polo picked up a puncher, which damaged a brake pipe, which eventually led to the team also taking lateness penalties as they tried to repair the damage for the last few stages. In the end, they dropped out of contention. There was also late drama for Lee Rose and Alvin Vonk when their mechanics were forced to change a differential on the classic Ford Escort. They took a few minutes in lateness penalties, but were back in the stages while still holding on to the classic car lead. Meanwhile, Manver Birian and Scotsman Drew Sturrock were still in control of the overall race behind the wheel of their immaculate R5 Skoda Fabia. Behind them, a flawless drive so far on the second day saw the Toyota Gazoo SA Racing Etios of defending South African champions Guy Bottrell and Simon Vasey Lyle climb the ladder up into second overall. But more importantly for Bottrell, still in control of the national R2 class. Vasey Lyle's younger brother Matthew was the big winner during this loop of stages as the young man rocketed up the leaderboard and into third place overall with the Mitsubishi Lancer of Gomez and Latifa happy to occupy the current fourth overall and second in the African Championship. It all came down to this, the final chance for the remaining drivers to try and make one last move and the final chance for the crowds to witness the action. And what a spectacle it was. York Timbers went all out to create the most beautiful spectator stage on the side of the mountain. The stage was aptly named the York Sabi grand finale. And this is how it all panned out. Chris Kurtzer and Greg Godrich arrived at the grand finale with a top 10 finish in sight. And then this happened. In a display of sportsmanship though, Kurtzer was rescued by the polo of Nico Nienaba and Gert Jansen van Rensburg, who stopped to pull them out and then continued to thrill the crowds with fine displays of driving skills coming down the hill. With both Nienaba and Kurtzer losing time, the polo of Jacques Dutoy and Ronald Renz gained a few spots and earned an overall top 10 finish in the process. They were beaten to the flag by the Toyota Etios of Chot Conradi and Mari van der Vaart, who fought back after their setbacks on day number one. Eighth across the line and first in the classic car category, no surprises here. It was the ever popular Ford Escort of Lee Rose and Navi Alvin Funk who continued to make new fans on every single stage, including the grand finale. They were beaten to the flag by the African Championship pairing of Clevin Gomez and Zunaid Khan, who survived the York Rally, seventh overall and third in the African Championship race for the Zambians. And what a result for the Ford Fiesta crew of JJ Potkita and Tommy Detoy who kept their noses clean and stayed out of trouble to cross the finish line in sixth overall and fourth for the National R2 class. Just ahead of JJ, his cousin, AC Potkita, who must have still been cursing that puncher that robbed him of a better result a few stages ago. But the young man from Secunda will live to fight another day. And another Gomez in another Mitsubishi Lancer. This time, Leroy Gomez and co-driver Riaz Latifa had a solid run to finish fourth overall and second in the fight for African Championship honors ahead of their Zambian teammates. Two days and way more than 200 treacherous kilometers have passed since the start of the York Rally. And during that time, a number of questions have been answered, but a few more remain. Who will win the coveted National R2 class? And where will our Kenyan visitors end up? Youngster Matthew Vasey Lyle, along with stand in navigator Rickus Faree, did a great job to climb the ranks on Saturday and move up into third overall and second in the R2 class. But the reality was the defending champions Bottrell and brother Simon Vasey Lyle were simply too quick and the gap too big. Bottrell then ended the day at the top of the South African R2 class standings. And that meant that Manver Birian and Drew Sturrock took the overall victory and the race for the African crews in their fabulous Skoda Fabio after a near perfect drive. Here it is then, the final confirmation showing Birian's name at the top, followed by the national winner Guy Bottrell and third place finisher going to his stablemate, Matthew Vasey Lyle. Gomez claimed second in the African Championship, whilst cousins AC and JJ Potkita finished fifth and sixth respectively. Lee Rose took the classic car category. With the times tallied, it was time for the winners to spray the bubbly from the winner's podium 
and as the fastest man over 15 stages, it was Man Verbirian who got to spray from the highest step. We had a lot of fun and you know you could say the only foot wrong that we put was probably today um, at the special stage. Uh, you know they say at the special stages there's more to lose than to gain. And with the South African class victory, it was defending champion Guy Bottrell who bounced back after failing to score at the opening round. Uh, yeah, we're really happy to get to the end. Um, cars undamaged at all. And we uh, just really stoked. Uh, York, York really did a fantastic job, put on a great vibe for us. So we're just looking forward uh, to the next event now. And that's it from the 2018 York Rally. See you at the new Rally Star at the Carousel for round three on the 25th and 26th of May. All the action from the 2018 York Rally was brought to you courtesy of York Timbers in association with SAM and MSA.